So let's start with a simple cloud environment. Any cloud would ideally or likely have some standard workloads such as web, application and DB instances and presence of object storage such as AWS S3 or Azure Blob is also becoming very common. The modern day applications are incomplete surely without uh, containers because the organizations these days keep building microservices architectures and we need cloud admins with a number of permissions to manage the cloud environment and all the workloads. So it all looks very simple until we look at it from the bad actors perspective. A bad actor by a simple definition is the one who would like to target this cloud environment, um, get a foothold, exfiltrate the information or cause some sort of disruption. Now bad actors like taking simple things, right? They like taking simple approaches and a simple approach here is to take advantage of cloud misconfigurations or weak configurations to carry out desired malicious activities without attracting too much attention of the infosec department. So let's look at some of the most common misconfigurations the bad actor could take advantage of. Uh, one of the frequently found, I would say, misconfigurations in the cloud is having admins with static passwords and no two-factor authentications. And these admins at times have overly permissive access and this surely does not look like a standard security, security configuration from a security compliance perspective at least. Let's look at some more public exposure of object storage buckets right and with unencrypted data sitting in there ready to be copied by a bad actor surely doesn't look like a sort of like standard security practice configuration again db instances which should only be exposed to app or web instances are sometimes found exposed to the internet and they could be subject to like you know brute force attack by the bad actors to guess the password the web and app instances surely require exposure to internet for relevant use cases, but they are at times found exposed on the high risk ports. So these are just some of the examples of misconfigurations and we could spend a number of hours going through all of them, but the security gaps do not stop with these misconfigurations, unfortunately, because we would, we would still have suspicious behaviors to look after because uh, if you are missing a lot of this behaviors in the cloud uh, we could be potentially missing a lot of malicious activities which could be happening and uh, we would not know like you know if some malicious activity recently started in the cloud environment that we operate in let's take a simple example cloud trail in aws so what if we just come to know that the cloud trail logging got disabled just a few minutes ago wouldn't we want to investigate and understand like you know if it was done by a bad actor before starting a sort of malicious activity of course we want to understand and what if we found a number of new instances in the cloud uh, which appear as a cause of like short and successive api calls and they are now being used for crypto mining so this sort of suspicious behaviors require immediate attention and investigation by the infosec of the company now, let's think for a moment from the compliance perspective, the compliance standards wouldn't want to see this sort of like misconfigurations or security gaps in the cloud environment. And as a security professional, uh, you would want to continuously monitor all these misconfigurations and fix them whenever they are found. And you would of course want to do it automatically because it is just not realistic for humans to achieve this manually like continuously monitor and fix these problems in the ever-changing cloud environment so let's understand like how CrowdStrike can help you address these sort of challenges well first of all the cloud identity and entitlement management or as we call it key m uh, that module can help you address the challenges around admin permissions and these privileges and the cloud security posture management can help you not only continuously scan the cloud environment for misconfigurations but also highlight suspicious behaviors by looking at the cloud events now it's important here uh, to note that both KEM and CSPM they do not require installation of any agent in the cloud environment and, and the information required for the analysis is collected by CrowdStrike by making API calls to your cloud environment. 
Now, it might be tempting to think that fixing all these misconfigurations will make a cloud a secure environment, but that unfortunately not the case yet. So let's understand what's been happening and why that could be the case. Bad actors, uh, as we understand, can still exploit vulnerable components of a publicly exposed application, or uh, they can take advantage of a build time weak configurations of the applications to get foothold in the environment, start lateral movement, and again, like you know, do the fancy malicious activities. Um, these issues uh, typically come from CI CD pipeline that the organization builds to like you know automatically build and deploy the applications. Now at a high level, a CI CD pipeline will have development, build and deploy phases. And if you look closely, most of these issues actually come from the development phase because when the developers are developing an application, they will use like commercially off the shelf or like uh, open source pre-built packages and a lot of these pre-built packages at times comes with vulnerable components and if these vulnerabilities are not addressed or detected at this stage uh, they will end up as containers hosts or serverless functions in the production environment so this results in a sort of like application sitting in a production environment ready to be exploited by a bad actor but hang on somebody could say that uh, that's all fine yeah that's your development life cycle but i already have a lot of images built into my repo which is the approved repo of the company so the attention then quickly turns to the identification of the of all the images stored in the repo and scan them so and the scan should highlight any running containers in the production environment with these vulnerable images right so these are the sort of challenges or problems we see in the DevOps environment and with this DevOps challenges well understood, let's look at the CrowdStrike CWP or Cloud Workload Protection approach and how we can address them. So with the CrowdStrike Cloud Workload Protection Software Composition Analysis or SCA, we can help you identify the vulnerable components built into the application dependencies and packages right so we can help you fix any vulnerable components at the very initial stage of the application development itself now the CrowdStrike CWP can connect into the organization's repo and it can be inserted into a CI CD pipeline to scan the images before they are deployed to the production environment as well and this can reveal the information of vulnerable components and misconfigurations built into the image or even any any presence of any malware and accidental leakage of secrets as well so this will help the devops engineers understand any non-standard security configurations and fix or replace them before deploying these images to the production environment now, one of the most important aspect of shifting left for security is that it can reduce a lot of noise and alerts for the cloud admins uh, and help them focus on high priority incidents. So let's briefly look at uh, identity security as well, because a use case of compromised credentials in an environment with static passwords, it's quite possible, right? So now if such a scenario were to occur, uh, one would need identity protection to ensure an organization's security system is able to stop any lateral movement caused by such an incident. Now, CrowdStrike identity protection can address the challenges around identity security and it may be worth having a separate conversation with the CrowdStrike identity expert to understand further details. So at this stage, it may be perfectly appropriate to think like, you know, yeah, that's it. We have done it. Uh, the organization would achieve an ideal security state by following all the security practices we have highlighted until now. But that unfortunately is still not the case. So all the applications are always subject to, as we understand, exposure to a previously unknown vulnerability or unknown malware. And this sort of situations typically lead the conversation to runtime protection. So CrowdStrike Cloud Platform includes an agent called Falcon Sensor, which is the same agent uh, that you could be using traditionally on Windows or Apple endpoints. And in addition to what we have discussed so far, this agent provides runtime protection to cloud workloads. 
this protection includes uh, exploit prevention and malware prevention and with these two major capabilities built in falcon sensor can provide protection against any unknown vulnerable component or malware sample and these capabilities are delivered using machine learning and static analysis which ensures minimal usage of resources on the workloads now we appreciate in the infosec space that no protection is 100 percent right we can't do 100 percent prevention and, and an organi organization always needs detection and response so CrowdStrike EDR is built into the cloud platform with the same Falcon sensor and can be enabled easily to capture comprehensive set of information that is used to detect malicious activities and lateral movement within the environment. And again, you can't just finish your security conversation uh, without threat hunting services. So CrowdStrike Overwatch can provide 24 into 7 monitoring of not only traditional endpoints, but also cloud workloads to ensure organizations are able to detect hideous and slow moving malicious activities within the environment. And we have so much confidence in our platform that we are able to offer a breach, breach prevention warranty of, of up to 1 million should your environment be breached after deploying our technology. The best part is that all this comes with a single console and a single agent. And uh, with this approach, we possibly combine three to five different vendors or different technologies and solutions into a single integrated and natively engineered platform. So it's clear by now that with the integrated platform that we have, uh, we will be able to uh, improve the efficiency of the operations department and bring down the associated cost and the improved security posture of the organization would surely result in a clear reduction in business risk. So with all these points combined, uh, we do have a strong business case here for an organization to acquire this platform and improve the return on investment of the overall security architecture of the organization. So that concludes the demonstration from my perspective and the overview of the cloud security platform. Thank you very much for your time and speak to you later.